good evening, everybody. Welcome to the By His Blood Ministries Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, tonight we will be in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Uh, let's open up with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to, to gather and to receive your holy word. Lord, I pray that as we do, that we, uh, we take it and we heed to it. Lord, I pray that we internalize it. I pray that we understand that your word is... is your way for us to understand the Holy Spirit. If we are lacking your word, we are lacking wisdom, we are lacking knowledge, we are lacking the ability to act in a way that you would want us to act. We cannot be in accordance with your word if we do not know your word, Lord. Therefore, it requires studying, it requires uh, receiving, it requires questions, it requires us to, to look deeply into it, Lord. Allow us to do that today, Lord, so that we may be better disciples, so that we may be better followers of Christ, Lord, so that we may be able to better understand the things that are going on in our own lives, so that we can uh, act in accordance to your will as opposed to our own. Lord, we pray that as, uh, as your word is received, all that are here in attendance and all that are at home uh, are, are consumed by the Holy Spirit, Lord, and that, that proper interpretation is given and that uh, your word is received in the way that you intended. In Jesus' precious holy name, amen. Uh, this week, i got to turn this off. I feel like I'm talking into my own ear. There we go. Uh, this week, Tomorrow, um, on Thursday, uh, the, I'm not sure if they're doing the high set testing here, or not testing, but uh, study here to, tomorrow or not. I, they were not here Tuesday, so I, I would assume that they're not going to be here tomorrow. Uh, Saturday, uh, we have the laundry ministry at noon uh, at the laundromat across from Oli Guacamole, the Washerama right down the road here. Uh, it's a great opportunity to, to work with our homeless brothers and sisters to uh, share the gospel and to, to help the community. I mean, uh, basically the things that we are called to do uh, as we see through God's word. Uh, also, uh, on Sunday, we will have our regular service at 11 a.m. I Man, I don't know about y'all, but I have loved the services on Sundays. They have been amazing. Uh, I don't know about the sermons, but I know that the spirit in here has been amazing. So, uh, please come join us. If you've never been here, it's a great opportunity to, to come and meet some people and, uh, and, and spend time with people that love Christ and, and love worshiping. Uh, on Monday, uh, we have the Overcomers Outreach Group meets at 730 and uh, it's growing doing a great job with that. Uh, it's, it's going really well. Tuesday, uh, I believe that the uh, women's ministry will be meeting at 6.30. Uh, and uh, Nikki will follow up on that. We'll have a, a definite announcement on that Sunday. And then uh, Wednesday, we'll have an announcement on that as well on Sunday. And uh, we'll take it at that. So uh, let's get into Deuteronomy chapter 28. If uh, y'all were here on Sunday, you know that uh, I used some of this uh, in the sermon on Sunday, uh, really talking about obedience and, and following God's word and God's way, as opposed to following our own word and our own way. One is, of course, the path to, to peace and the path to joy. The other one is the, the path to destruction. Uh, if you need help discerning which one that is, our way is the path to destruction and the Lord's way is the path to peace and joy. Uh, but you know, he, he lays it out for us. And, uh, if we think that as he talks to Israel, that there's nothing that we can glean from this and we're sadly mistaken because as we see that God is immutable, he does not change. Therefore, if he has set one per people apart as holy, which would be the Israelites as a holy nation, and then through the, the blood of Christ, he set us apart as holy as individuals. And we have a direct pathway to God that he's not going to change the things that he desires from us. So we need to pay attention to these things and we need to not just say, okay, well, they didn't obey. Well, you, we're not obeying either. And uh, we have to pay attention. So uh, starting in Deuteronomy chapter 28 with verse one, it says, and if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord, your God, being careful to do all his commandments that I have commanded you today. The key two words there are faithfully and all. That means that, that not only do you obey all of his commandments, because we can all take 
God's word and we can break it down into just a bunch of arbitrary things to do and not to do, right? If we, if we follow the Ten Commandments, but we don't do the first one, right? The first one, which is love God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul. We're not really doing anything. We're just going through the motions. To faithfully follow all of God's statutes means that our life is built around God's statutes. That means that at the center of our lives is God. At the center of our lives is obeying him and receiving him the way that he desires us to receive him, which is through his commandments, through his way of living, which is a way of living that sets us apart as holy. And it says that if we do that, the Lord will set you high above all the nations of the earth. So through doing that, there is blessings attached to obedience. And it says, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. So these aren't just blessings that are, are, are going to glance by and they're, they're, they're just, you know, little bits and pieces of blessings. These are blessings that will overtake our lives. These are blessings that we can't even imagine through obedience to him that we will be receiving. But we have to understand that as we receive these blessings and as we receive these victories, the glory belongs to him, not to us. If we are believers that we did it, then we are actually a prideful person and against God. Yes, you played a part in it. You made some movements that God directed and God put things in your life, but without God opening the door, your blessings would not be there. And we always have to keep that spirit of humbleness within us. Otherwise, we become Believers in self and not believers in God. And it says, it says, if you obey the voice of the Lord, your God. So the blessings come through obeying the voice of the Lord, your God. We have been indwelt with the voice of God through the Holy Spirit. But as I said, when we opened in prayer, if we do not attach the Holy Spirit or do not fill ourselves with God's word, the Holy Spirit is drowned out by us. We have to have God's word in unison with the Holy Spirit if we are going to obey his commandments because we will find a way to manipulate, we will find a way to deceive, we will find a way to work around the things that God wants us to do and we will confuse our voice with the voice of the Holy Spirit. It says, blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your cattle, the increase of your herds and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket, your kneading bowl. Blessed shall be you when you come in and blessed shall be you when you come out. You're going to be blessed all the time if you are obedient to the Lord. Now, people people are at home probably thinking, I'm obedient to the Lord, but, but I'm not blessed all the time. Well, you're not obedient to the Lord all the time. Neither am I and neither is anyone else. There are times where we get consumed by self, where we get distracted by the world, where we get sucked in by the sins because of our sin nature. We will never be perfect, but we can be better. We can always be better. I'll just go ahead and call it what it is. I am sitting here in an empty sanctuary talking to a phone. And let me see. There are two people watching. So of our entire congregation, Two people believe that they need to receive more of God's word. Just saying. I know that that's, a, that's an empirical look. That is purely based on the visual that I see, but I see it. We have to take God's word and use it with the spirit in unison. And if we're not receiving God's word, we are not going to receive these blessings. 
So if you are not willing to receive God's word and you come and you say, I'm being obedient, but I'm not receiving blessing, I will first thing say, how much scripture have you read this week? How many times have you sought God's word? You see, we serve an omnipresent God who's always able to bless us, but, and he's all around us. But without God's word, we are unable to tap into that so we can always get better. I hope that more people watch this later on. I hope that more people watch. That's why I said we will pray and we will see what will be next Wednesday. Because there might be something that, 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 that I could do to reach more people with God's word. And if so, I'm going to do that because that is my job. It says the Lord will cause your enemies, we're in verse 7, who rise against you to, defeat, to be defeated before you. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your barns and in all that you undertake. And he will bless you in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. God is giving us these things. In 2 Corinthians, it says, you have been given these things, and I'm, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing. You are, you've been given these things, so why are you boasting as if you haven't been given? So why are you boasting as if you created these things? These are not things that you created. These are all things that have been given by the Lord. And it says, the Lord will establish you as a people holy to himself as he has sworn to you. He swore that to Israel through the Abrahamic covenant. And he has sworn it to us through the blood of Jesus Christ. That we will be a people holy unto him. But in order to be holy unto him, we have to be holy with him. We have to be with him and with him alone. Yes, we'll have moments where we, we fade and we'll have moments where we trip. We'll have moments where we blunder. But our hearts and our minds need to be with him. And it is impossible unless we completely do what it says in the very first sentence. Faithfully obey all of his commandments. Faithfully obey. That means that, that, that when we slip up, we know that we messed up because we know how we're supposed to be living. Without his word to go with the spirit, we are clueless. We are just walking around blindly doing what we believe is best. But we can see through the fact that he is saying that our enemies will be defeated, they will flee before us in seven ways, and that we will be established as holy if we keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his way, and all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. On Sunday, I used the example of being able to walk into a, a trap house run by a gang, or being able to walk into the jail, or being able to walk into different places. It's not because I'm big. It's not because I'm strong. It's not because of anything other than the fact that they know that I'm coming as a representative of God. And though they may not believe, they are still fearful because even what they don't believe in is visible. There is power and there is victory in Christ. There is power and victory in God in knowing that you are with him and people can see that. But if you're not willing to commit, it cannot be seen because it's buried under all the garbage of the world. It says, and the Lord will make you abound in prosperity in the fruit of your womb. In the fruit of your livestock, in the fruit of your ground, within the land that the Lord has swore to give the father, your fathers to give you, the Lord will open to you his good treasury. We spoke about this on Sunday too. Good treasury, God's good gifts, the gifts that we cannot obtain here on earth, the gifts that are inimaginable to us, the gifts that we don't value because they are not necessarily tangible. Yes, God will provide. God will provide with food. God will provide with clothing. God will provide with shelter. God will provide all of those things. But the gifts that he gives us are bigger than houses, are bigger than cars, are bigger than money, are bigger than those things. Yes, 
He gives us abilities. He allows us to obtain these things. But what he is giving us and what he is offering us is so much bigger, so much more important, so much more inconceivable by our feeble little minds than anything that we could ever obtain here on earth that we choose the latter. We choose the shiny gold ring over here as opposed to the real blessings of God. He says, he will give rain to your land in the season to bless all the work of your hands and you shall live to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head, not the tail. You shall only go up and not down. That is, that is, there's nothing more true than that. Mm. If, <laughs> if we obey the Lord and if we follow his commandments, there is no other way we can go but up. It is when we fall away from those commandments, though we may have given our lives to Christ, though we may be a believer that he is our Lord and our Savior, Though we may still have salvation, if we do not obey his commandments, what we will find is we will find that we, I'm not even going to say backslide, we continuously trip and stumble our way through life, through life, until one day we realize what we're doing. For some, it takes very little because they don't have a high threshold of pain. For others, like myself, it takes a whole lot. But when you realize it and when you get the taste of, of, of the real goodness, when you get the taste of, of what it really feels like to be obedient, when you get the taste of what it really feels like to get a grasp of God's word, to get a grasp of what the Holy Spirit is telling you, you can't turn away from it. Irresistible grace. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, be careful to do them. And if you do not turn aside from any of the words that I command you today to the right hand or to the left and go after no other gods and serve them. When we turn to the right or to the left from God's word, that is exactly what we are doing. We are finding other gods to worship. What altar are you kneeling at today? What altar is it that you are worshiping? What God are you giving credence to today? What God, what God is controlling you? Woo! What God is controlling you? Disobedience comes with curses and consequences. And God is drawing a very distinct line in this chapter between his people, and I don't mean the Israelites, I mean his people, his people, period, which some of us are, and some of you are. But he's drawing a line between his people and the people of the world. He will bless those that are with him. But listen to what he says about those that are against him. In verse 15, and we didn't go over this on Sunday. It says, but if you will not obey. In other words, if you rebel against the voice of the Lord, your God. Or be careful to do all his commandments and his statutes that I command you today. So it says, if you will not obey the voice of the Lord, or if you will not be careful to do all the commandments and statutes that you are being commanded today, then all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. See, the, 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 the verbiage is the same. If you obey and if you, if you come in to God's kingdom, blessings will overtake you. Blessings are the natural outcome of obedience to the Lord. The natural outcome of disobedience to the Lord is curses. Curses are consequences. 
And you can see them over and over and over again. And it says, same verbiage. Cursed shall you be in the city. Cursed shall you be in the field. Cursed shall you be, shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Cursed shall you be the fruit of your womb, the fruit of your ground, the increase of your herds, the young of your flock. Cursed shall you be when you come in and cursed shall you be when you come out. He is not talking about a bad day. He is not talking about a rough spell. You can be blessed on a bad day. You can be blessed during a rough spell in your life as long as you are obeying and following the Lord. But if you are disobedient, if you are one of the sons of disobedience, to take from Ephesians chapter 2, if you are one of the sons of disobedience or daughters of disobedience, it doesn't matter what's going on in your life. You are cursed. Because what he is talking about goes way beyond our realm. It bleeds into all of eternity. There is going to be a day where we all stand before God. And it doesn't matter if you have a million dollars here on earth. If you were disobedient, if you lied, stole, cheated your way through life, Ignore God, you are going to be on the losing end and you are going to see what cursed really is. If you grew up rubbing just two nickels together, lived in a shed, drove a beater, but you were faithful and you understood that you were blessed to have that shed. You were blessed to have that beer. You were blessed to have the food that you had. You were blessed to have the things that you, you, you received from the Lord. You will be blessed eternally. There is a spirit of gratefulness that comes with obedience to the Lord while there is a spirit of entitlement that comes with disobedience. If you say this a lot, you probably need to check your relationship with the Lord. I deserve. You don't deserve anything. And what you're getting, you don't deserve at all. What you are feeding into is a false sense of entitlement into thinking that God owes you something. God does not owe you anything. We owe God gratitude. We owe God thanks. We owe God everything because he has given all. He goes on to say, he says, the Lord will send on you curses, confusion, and frustration at all that you undertake to do. Until you are destroyed and perish quickly on account of the evil of your deeds because you have forsaken me. The Lord your God will make pestilence stick to you until he has consumed you off the land you are entering to take possession of. The Lord will strike you with wasting disease and fever, inflammation and fiery heat, with drought and blight and with mildew. They shall pursue you until you perish and the heavens over your head shall be bronze and the earth under your you shall be iron. The Lord will make the rain of your land powder. From heaven, dust shall come down on you until you are destroyed. You will be cursed in every way possible, and God can make it happen because another one of his omni traits is omnipotence. He is all powerful. He is all powerful. He has the ability to do that. And if you read through the Old Testament and you get into the, the, the books after the Pentateuch, you will see that the people of Israel have struck with many of these things. They were struck at times with pestilence. They were struck with drought. They were struck at, with all kinds of confusion, frustration, and curses because of their disobedience. Over and over and over again. And then let's just not look at Israel. Let's look at ourselves. How much confusion, 
How many curses, how much frustration have you been struck with because of your disobedience to God? You don't think these things apply to us? You don't think that these things happen in the world every day? You don't think that pestilence has struck our little ivory tower? You don't think that we have not been diseased to the point of death? You can look at it as physical or metaphorical disease. Take your choice. And it says in verse 25, the Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. You shall go out one way against them and shall flee seven ways before them. And you shall be a whore to all the kingdoms of the earth. So the defeats that you suffer will be so ugly that no one will even want to look at you. And your dead body shall be the food for all the birds of the air and for the beast of the earth. And there shall be no one to frighten them away. The Lord will strike you with the boils of Egypt and with the tumors and scabs and itch of which you cannot be healed. The Lord will strike you with madness and blindness and confusion of mind. You shall grope at noonday and as the blind grope in darkness. You shall not prosper in your ways. You shall only be oppressed and robbed continually and there shall be no one to help you. This rings so true. We talked about the SWORD acronym that comes from the book of Judges. It, there were so many times where that's exactly where Israel was, but because of God's grace and because of his mercy and because of the groanings of the faithful that were within Israel, God would send a judge and then they would, they would spend the time in peace, but then they'd go right back to their old ways, even worse than before. How many times do we see that today? I mean, let's draw parallels. If we're going to read it, let's read it for real. Let's look at how it applies to us. How many times have you seen someone come in and they're like, I love Jesus. I love me some Jesus. I'm going to change this. I'm going to change that. And then I'm going to change this. I'm going to change that. Hold on a second. No, God is going to change this. God is going to change that. Because when you change it, it is temporary. When you change it, you may get accolades. You may get all kinds of compliments, all kinds of attaboys, all kinds of pats on the back. But when you believe that you are the one doing it, you will suffer curses. And when you come back to the things that you were doing, it will be worse than before. You don't believe me? Look around. And it's not me who has promised these things. It is God who has said, these are the things that are going to happen. And you know what? We see them every single day. You can, you can live in your little bubble. You can look through your rose-colored glasses. You can say that that is not true. That that makes you a liar. It happens on a daily basis. And it happens generationally. It happens generation. Let, let, let me just say that one more time. It happens generation. Unless someone takes hold of a household and spiritually directs them in the right way, generation after generation after generation is going to suffer these curses. I'm talking to the heads of households now. Might as well poke every bear that's out there. What does your household look like? If you are the spiritual head of household and you are looking down and you're like, I can't believe that they're doing this, it's probably because you didn't instruct properly. And you should believe it. Because it's happening. It says, you shall betroth a wife and another man shall ravish her. You shall build a house, but you shall not dwell in it. You shall plant a vineyard, but you shall not enjoy its fruit. Your ox shall be slaughtered before your eyes, but you shall not eat any of it. Your donkey shall be seized before your face, but shall not be restored to you. Your sheep shall be given to your enemies, but there shall be no one there to help you. Your sons and your daughters shall be given to another people while your eyes look on and, and, and fail with longing for them all day. 
but you shall be helpless because you don't have the Lord. You've got yourself and you chose that way. You chose false gods. You chose the easy route and now you're helpless. This happened. This is historical. And this was written well before it happened. This was written well before 586 BC. Because listen, listen to the prophecy right here. It says, a nation that you have not known shall eat up the fruit of your ground and of all your labors and you shall be only oppressed and crushed continually so that you are driven mad by the sights that your eyes see. The Lord will strike you on your knees and your legs with grievous boils of which you cannot be healed from the sole of your foot to the crown of your head. I'm going to continue reading and then we'll talk about the historical significance of these uh these prophecies, verse 36, the Lord will bring you and your king whom you have set over you to a nation that neither you nor your fathers have known. And there you will serve other gods of wood and stone. You shall become a whore, a proverb, a byword among all the peoples where the Lord will lead you away. They shall carry much seed into the field and then gather in little for locusts shall consume it. You shall plant vineyards and dress them but you shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worm shall eat them. You shall have olive trees throughout all your territory, but you shall not anoint yourself with oil, for the olive shall drop off. You shall father sons and daughters, but they shall not be yours, for they shall go into captivity. The cricket shall possess all your trees, the fruit of your ground. The sojourner who is among you shall rise higher and higher above you, and you shall come down lower and lower. <laughs> he shall lend to you, and you shall not lend to him. He shall be the head, and you shall be the tail. In 722 B.C., Israel went into exile uh, at the hand of the Assyrians, leaving Judah because Judah had some righteous kings and Judah, Judah still had a little faith. But then it became so bad that in 586, they went into captivity under Babylon for 70 years. But the, 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 the things that were just said right here, and we talk about, I, I've used this example, Mark Twain, I can't remember what year it was, it was in the 1920s, I believe. He, he took a ride through Israel by train, and he said it was the most desolate land that he had ever seen. Palestine, which was part of Israel at that time, if you look, it is desolate. There's, there's no trees, there's no, there is nothing there. God did exactly what he said he was going to do. He took all of that away from Israel. So what makes you think if you are disobedient and you don't honor the Lord, you don't live by his commandments, you try to give him lip service, but you don't give him your heart. What makes you think that he won't strip away all the things that you have layer by layer by layer by layer? And the thing is, he doesn't have to put any work into it because we are so good at doing it ourselves. Verse 45, it says, all these curses shall come upon you and pursue you and overtake you till you are destroyed because you did not obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep the, his commandments and his statutes that he commanded you. They shall be a sign and a wonder against you and your offspring forever because you did not serve the Lord your God with joyfulness, gladness of heart because of the abundance of all things. It matters how you worship. It matters how you worship. Do you worship with gladness of heart? Do you worship with joyfulness? Are you happy to worship God or are you looking at your watch the entire time? Are you happy to worship God or are you worshiping your job? 
Are you happy to worship God or are you worshiping your wife? Are you happy to worship God or are you, are you worshiping your child? Are you happy are you to worship God or are you worshiping the needle? Are you happy to worship God or are you worshiping the bottle? Are you happy to worship God or are you worshiping sex? What are you worshiping? I know that you come to this building, but what are you worshiping? If it's not God, then you are wasting time. Israel learned it the hard way. Israel was given as an example. Scripture even says that we are a people that are supposed to be faithful and make Israel jealous. But all we are doing is repeating their mistakes. And he says, therefore you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you. If you read through Kings and Chronicles, you see the relationship that God had with Nebuchadnezzar. There is no doubt that Nebuchadnezzar was anointed to overthrow Judah. All the prophets spoke of him. The spoke of the exile. God is sending, God is sending, God is sending, God is sending Nebuchadnezzar to destroy you. And everything that I just read happened. So he says, send a nation against you from far away, from the end of the earth, swooping down like an eagle, a nation whose language you do not understand, a hard-faced nation who will not respect the old or show mercy to the young. Nebuchadnezzar killed the king's two sons right in front of him and then ripped his eyes out. So that's the last thing that he saw. That's pretty ruthless. That's not showing a whole lot of mercy. It says, it shall eat at the offspring of your cattle and the fruit of your ground until you are destroyed. It shall not leave you again, leave you grain, wine or oil, the increase of your herds or the young of your flock until they have perished. They shall besiege you in all your towns until your high and fortified walls, which you have trusted, come down throughout your land. And they shall besiege you in all your towns throughout your land, which the Lord your God has given you. God has given the people these, these wonderful things and they've built up these walls that they think are going to protect them forever, but the walls are built by man and they come crumbling down. I don't think I need to say any more. That is what actually happened, but let's, let's look at it in our lives. God gives you these wonderful things. You build up all these walls, trying to protect them, use them improperly, Worship self instead of God. And what happens? Those walls are torn down by the world and you are besieged. This really happened. You can, you can look it up in 2 Kings chapter 6. Verse 53 says, And you shall eat the fruit of your womb, the flesh of your sons and daughters whom the Lord your God has given you in the siege and in the distress with which your enemies have distressed you. The man who is most tender and refined among you will begrudge food to his brother, to the wife he embraces, and to the last of his children whom he has left, so that he will not give to any of them any of the flesh of his children whom he is eating, because he has nothing else left. In the siege and in the distress of which your enemies shall distress you in all your towns, the most tender and refined woman among you, who would not venture to set the sole of her feet on the ground because she is so delicate and tender, will begrudge to the, to the husband she embraces, to her son and daughter, her afterbirth that comes out of, from between her feet and her children whom she bears because lacking everything, she will eat them secretly in the siege, in the distress with which your enemy shall distress in your towns. 
That is a grotesque image. But as I said, it happened. These are some of the prophecies that came true. This is what disobedience leads to. It became so miserable. It was so hard to get food. It was so hard because Nebuchadnezzar and the, and the Babylonian army were putting the stranglehold on Judah. Putting the stranglehold, cutting off all things, making it impossible that they were starving. They were so hungry. They were so just confused as to what was going on that they were willing to eat their own children. When you turn your back on God, it opens you up to attack. And that attack gets ugly. And if you don't think that the same things can happen to you, I'm sorry. But it can. He even gives a final warning, starting in verse 58. He says, if you are not careful to do all the words of this law that is written in this book, that you might fear the glorious and awesome name, the Lord your God. So, <laughs> If you don't treat God with the reverence, respect, and honor that he deserves, then the Lord will bring on you and your offspring extraordinary afflictions, afflictions severe and lasting, and sickness grievous and lasting. And he will bring upon you again all the diseases of Egypt of which you were afraid, and they shall cling to you So every sickness that they saw in Egypt, everything that they were afraid of, he's going to bring upon them. But then it says, every sickness also and every affliction that is not recorded in the book of this law, the Lord will bring upon you until you destroy it. So even things that have never been brought out before will be brought against people who rebel against the Lord. Whereas you were, as, you were as numerous as the stars of heaven, you will be left few in number because you did not obey the voice of the Lord. The Lord, after the, the exile to Babylon, he left a remnant. Just a remnant of, of a few faithful. A nation that was, as he said, numerous as the stars, was reduced to just a few. The few faithful. Not the ones who acted faithful. Not the ones who, who, who just confessed with their mouths, but the ones that were truly faithful. And it says, and the, as the Lord took delight in doing you good and multiplying you, so the Lord will take delight in bringing ruin upon you and destroying you. And you shall be plucked off the land that you are entering to take possession of. Now, I know that you're going to be like, well, that's not loving of the Lord. Well, what the Lord delights in is justice. And that's justice. That is justice. Again, as I said earlier, he's drawing a very distinct line between his people and the world. He delights in justice and the only just way for us to be with him in eternity, the only just way for us to receive the blessings, the only just way for us to receive the peace and the joy is through him. That is the only just way because we are incapable of doing it on our own. He doesn't delight in the affliction, he delights in the justice. God cannot be unjust because it violates his character. Therefore, his justness must prevail and he delights in his justness because he is the only true judge. Verse 64 says, And the Lord will scatter you among all peoples from one end of the earth to the other. And there you shall serve other gods of wood and stone, which... Neither you nor your fathers have known. So they, they go into exile and to, to, to Babylon and they worship all brand new gods. And I know that there's some faithful in the mix. But if you look at the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, everyone knelt 
to the image, except for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And that's why they were thrown into the fiery furnace. Are you the three or are you the masses? Something to think about. And among these nations, you, you shall find no, no respite. And there shall be no resting place for the sole of your foot. But the Lord will give you there a trembling heart and failing eyes and a languishing soul. Your life shall hang in doubt before you. Night and day you shall be in dread and have no assurance of your life. They are in power. They were at the womb. They were at the whim of King Nebuchadnezzar. And as we saw when I told you about what he did to the king and his sons, he was a pretty ruthless dude. You never knew what he was going to do. If you made him mad, you were going to die. So you didn't know what it was going to be one day to the next. Because unlike the Lord, Nebuchadnezzar's rules were subjective. They were subjective to the way he felt. They were subjective to his mood. They were subjective to how he was that day. He could change his mind. He could do differently. He could think differently. He could do whatever he wanted. He didn't give a black and white. It was always up to his interpretation. In the morning you shall say, if only it were evening. And at evening you shall say, if only it were morning. Because of the dread of your heart shall feel and the sights of your eyes shall see. And the Lord will bring you back in ships to Egypt, a journey that I promised that you should never make again. And there you shall offer yourselves for sale to your enemies as male and female slaves, but there will be no buyer. Again, read it. Read it. I challenge you to read the Kings and the Chronicles Corpus. And that means First and Second Kings and First and Second Chronicles. Read it. See if that happened. Read the prophets. See what happens. Israel was scattered among the nations and was not reinstituted as a state until May 14th, 1948. It all happened. Now what I want you to do is I want you to take these things and I want you to compare them to what God tells us in Revelation. Look at the similarities. You don't think that these things apply to us? They absolutely do. It breaks down to two kinds of people. God's people and the rest of people. And as we see, God delights in justice. So, you can go on believing that your actions, your words, and your deeds are just enough for you to stand before God and him to say, you rightfully belong here. Good luck with that. Or you can learn scripture, learn how to use the Holy Spirit properly, be a disciple of Christ, be a partaker of his divine nature, and stand before him and say, the only reason that I belong here is because of you. And he will say, because of me, you have been justified. So as we leave here today, my challenge is make your choice. Decide who you are living for. Are you living for you or are you living for the Lord? If you are living for the Lord, you will benefit. If you are living for you, you are going to suffer. And you are going to suffer greatly. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you for your holy word. And we thank you for all the many blessings that you have given us, Lord. Lord, you have poured out abundantly upon us, Lord. If we do not see it, it is our fault. If we do not see it, it's because we are spiritually blind. Let us not be 
spiritually blind, Lord. Let us be a people that see what blessings are. Let us be a people that recognize the greatness of God. Let us be a people that recognize the grace and the mercy that we've been afforded. Let us not put ourselves on the hill, but let us kneel and worship you, Lord. Let us always put you above all others. Let us always put you where you belong, Lord. Lord, I pray that you forgive us for where we fall short. I pray that you forgive us for our ignorance. I pray that you forgive us for our disobedience. I pray that you forgive us for our lack of caring. And I pray that you forgive us for our lack of desire. I pray that these things change in our lives, Lord. And I pray that we honor you properly each and every day. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen.